Okay, my friends, today is a day of judgment. Today, as you know, I've been talking about we need new physics, we need new geology, we need all kinds of new things. And physics and geology, they all realize that there's an issue, but they don't, they can't confront it because they are held in position by people above them that will not let them speak and keep their jobs. Well, we're going to do a whole new thing. We're going to do a new school, and we're going to start today with physics. And this is the new physics. All right, and what, what does that mean? It, everything changed because of the particle nature of the nucleus is made of dipoles. I'm going to go through the whole thing. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. And this goes to my credibility because I'm going to show you. I've been doing this for 50 plus years. Now, we're going to have, do classes on new physics, new geology, new history, new astrophysics, new chemistry, and new bio interactions let's call it that way bio the way the biome really works is mostly what it's going to be about bacteria in the body because that's the biggie now let's go into it it's going to take a little while but these are the good because i'm going to tell you right now if you got kids or you know anybody that do have kids and they're going to school and they're taking classes they're just really wasting their time it, because what it, it's good to learn what they have to say, but then stack it up against what we can show in our evidence and let them talk back to that because that's what they have to confront. They can't just tell you, listen to this and you're smart. No, they have to say, here's what we have to say and here's what Roger has to say. What do you say about that? And then they're going to say, just shut up and listen to what I have to say. Otherwise, if you can, if you can engage them in a conversation, that would be fabulous. But I think you're going to find that that will not happen. So what we need to do is to, to expose this, as I am doing, on the Internet in classes. And today is class number one. Okay, I've been showing the light experiment, and the result is this fission of light and then fusion of light. Now, this is Rod Warren, who discovered this just absolutely by accident, just doing exactly this. All he took was two nails, and he's, he's a rusty nail, and he had them so close together and put the venturi. And you'll see how he, how he did this. It made a venturi, and then he shined the laser through it, and, and he was trying to find these patterns. Well, he was taking pictures down on top, looking down to see what was happening in here, and he had them exactly tuned to create the separation of the muon from the electron showers. Absolutely phenomenal. When I saw it, I flipped out. Now, here's this is all he's doing, and I want kids to do this. Now, you see what I have here? All he's using is a little tiny construction laser, like just like this. All right, he's using, or you could probably use this kind of a laser. Now, and he, all he's using is an old, this was when he was using this, this exact same phone, Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy S3. Now they got better ones and they're even better shots and so forth. But that's all he did. And I think he was using the selfie portion. Now, what it is, is light, he has described, he's absolutely proven that light is a spinning particle. And it is a particle, it's not a wave. I mean, it creates a wave, but it is a particle that creates a wave because there's a big magnetic field around it. I explain this all in great detail, because that's the part I understand. Now, and all he was doing is just, just playing around. And he doesn't want to be involved. So, I want everybody to... to to start doing this. I mean, he, Rod is going to do this every day of his life, I think. he's probably, I think he's been doing this every day. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he, he doesn't want to get involved in any, you know, like I, I said, do you want somebody to try to fund you to do something, man? You do, you just, you're being wasted here. And he said, no, I just don't want to be involved. I said, well, no. So, somebody's got to do this because we need free energy. And I'm too old to get involved deeply any deeper than I am. I have a lot of other things. So here goes how he, this is all he did, watch. He turned on his laser. Well, not yet, but here it goes. He never talks really much. <laughs> he just shows me what he's doing. He turned on the laser. He's only that far away. Now, that's something you can vary, can go closer or further away. And he's shooting it to those two nails. 
and then he's turning off the light and way down the back of his garage he's getting this interference pattern now it's only between the two nails so this is no flappy waves and he, he was amazed at how far out the edge of the interference patterns go but at a certain point they stop pushing each other this is where the real push to shove is and that's it he's done now let's get a little deeper into this okay so I, I, I'm going to get into detail but this is the red pulse laser wave which has a particle in it we accelerated the wave using a venturi which I'm going to explain in detail about that that's the particle escaping from the wave concussing at the venturi this is what the particle looks like black and white on a black and white two bar magnets and they literally are particles that are little bar magnets and we've never seen the dark side before because you've never seen them concuss like this the only people that have ever seen this is CERN when they hit things head on like gigantically and then they see these particles and then they see the same thing we see but they don't understand and we do and I understand it quite well and here's the particles as they separate these are the muons and these are the electron showers now and they come from that particle which right here was the two black and white balls now CERN knows about this, but they don't understand where they came from. So here's what CERN's interpretation of this is. And they're correct. There's the muon, the black ball, and there's the white ball, and they turn into showers. The black ball doesn't do anything because it's gravity, it's dark matter, it's a muon. Now, we showed this right here. There they are separating. There's no question that they were attached. There's no question they have fissioned, which means they divided. That's fission. There's no question they're coming back together. That's fusion. Fission and fusion is the same thing that they're trying to do right now, only we can do it on a tabletop portably, not from some central distribution center. So these could be used, the devices we can make to harvest this energy could be handheld walking around with them. And tiny, absolutely tiny. All right, what did I just show you? I showed you a red laser pulsing, boop, 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 and then it accelerates like crazy. He's only about an inch or so, a couple of inches away, and you can vary this distance to see where it's most convenient. And then the size of the nails, these little, little tiny nails, you can use even smaller than that. He's been using sewing needles, and I figured out the distance. I, I got her calculated out here somewhere. I think it's about 0 .002 inches that you want to be separated which keeps the black balls from going through and makes the white balls go into the showers or something like that which is the magnetic field that an electron would control anyway um, the particles end up showing up as these particles just before they go through the venturi this is the venturi right here all right as they come down blah, 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 there's a whole batch of them there's not just one they're all over the place, uh, but then the, their fields crush here. The black ones are too big to get through if you tune the venturi correctly. And they come around and then they reattach down here. In between, they say this is 200 times more energy. And I, they are these are W and Z bosons, muons, whatever you want to call them. I call them also dark matter. We've never seen these before and you will never see them again unless you do this experiment or you crash particles so intensively like CERN does. But we're using light so we can see the basic, 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 basic particle. They're seeing huge thousands and well actually hundred billion times bigger than, than an, an electron. So that's they're dig then they're digging through the debris. They're finding these particles in the debris, you know, after a lot of searching, but they don't know where they came from and how they manifest themselves. I'm showing you exactly where they came from, part of light, photons of light. They crash through the venturi. They separate. They come back together. That's fission, which means to separate, and that's fusion, which means to come back together. So we did it. And light spins, it's a particle. As I show, it's these particles here, they're back-to-back -back magnets. They spin, and that's what creates some the interference patterns. And the core of every nucleus and every atom is not a big 
proton or a neutron or a bunch of them together. It's a hundred percent electrons. So these are equal. One big proton today, or they always told you it was a big proton, it's actually 1839 electrons. And then that makes this a dipole. 1840 makes it neutral. 1839 gives it a positive charge. It wants one more electron to become a proton, which is neutral. And that's the difference in size, is one electron. It's not something that's hard to understand. And this accounts for all of the isotopes, which means I, I have lost a couple of electrons, and I want more, or I have an extra electron stuck down on me, and I really want to push it away. Those are the two uh, opposite poles of of uh, isotopes. They're either a positively charged isotope or a negatively charged isotope. And they can break into pieces called nuclear decay and nuclear ra you know, um, half-lifes and all that stuff. And when you bomb them, the huge chunks come off and they will kill you. Light will not kill you because light is one of these particles right there. No, light won't kill you, but it'll put your eyes out. And they make these kind of glasses here for the different colors because they, they have to absorb a certain radiation. So be very, 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 very careful. You don't, you don't radiate back into your eyes or hit yourself in the eye with a laser. I mean, instantaneously you can lose your sight. So be, if you're going to do this stuff, and I'm not recommending anybody do anything, and I'm, but I'm saying if you ever do, I am recommending you take precautions. And, um, but this, you should learn physics right now because it's, it's absolutely changed right at this moment. So you're going to be one of the first to understand the reality of the physics world. It's a particle. It spins. It can accelerate faster than the speed of light. It can slow down. It can separate. We can see the muons. We can see the bosons. We can see the fermions. We can see the electron showers. We can see the neutrinos. We can see all the things they want to see. And now we have to use this new knowledge to create free energy. And, I, and because it's so basic and so simple, I think this can be done within a matter of a couple of weeks or a couple of months at the outside if somebody would take an interest in doing it. Your different things you can do is adjust the distance of the laser here. You can adjust the size of the Venturi. You can create, instead of rounded, you can create angular, you can use copper or, or zinc or whatever, or you could use a, whatever, transition metals, to increase the intensity here. We could supplement this with a Tesla coil, which would force a whole ton of electrons to congregate around here. We could use a Van de Graaff generator, which could pull the electrons out or push them in, whichever you want, because that's what it does. Or, and then we need to figure out where we can harvest the most amount of energy. And that we need to have some kind of a solar type panel to collect, just like a solar collector does right now, which is the exact same thing. And, but it, you need something that can pick up all these extreme high energy particles, because they're going to be extreme. And you can see they're extreme. When you see the light, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant whiteness here, after it's just coming through red over here, that's obviously an enormous increase in energy. So I want kids to start to become the new leaders and to, to open up their minds and stay away from this indoctrination that read what I told you, read page three, and if you can write exactly what it says, you're educated and I'll give you a diploma. Well, that doesn't work. It never worked for me. And it's, the only way it does work is because they, they're forcing it on us. And right now, that, that's stopped. As far as I'm concerned, that is over. All right, if anybody wants to tell me I can't see these particles, you can't see them. They've been seeing them forever. Since 2014, they've been using the smartphones as cosmic ray detectors, which are particles that are high-energy particles, exactly like we use. And um, Dylan is Rod's nephew. <laughs> I don't know. He sent me this the other day. I don't know. It freaked me out. I've got to be honest with you. He's doing something. There's some kind of a, um, a field detector in his smartphone. Because I believe this is only the moon. 
And, I mean, he sent me a bunch of these things, and I don't know what to make of them. I really don't. But I can tell you one thing. He's seeing dipoles. He's seeing magnetic polarity. And that is everything there is is a dipole. As I said, you know, there is nothing but dipoles. Whoops. Hold on. Let me show you something. All right, like I said, you, you I, I, I don't know what to think about these things that Dylan sent me, you know, but that, it, that it, that's it right there. That's, I'm not, no question whatsoever, that's the black and white ball, just like I showed you in, but it, what, what is it doing there? <laughs> if that's the moon, I don't know, what are these? What's it, what are they doing in front of the moon, if that's the moon? Now, you guys got the cell phones. I don't even have any of this stuff, to be honest with you. But you can see all of this is magnetic fields. It's a field effects. He's picking them up. I don't know how. But all of these are field effects. And you see this blue? That means there's more energy there. And what is this doing? Look at this stuff. What the hell is going on there? I mean, it freaked me out. i got to be honest with you. I don't know what he's picking up here. But I can tell you what, I know these are polarities, and these are field entanglements. And they are all dipoles. If you see white on one side and dark on the other side, that's a dipole. Now that one there, mm -hmm. Now this, again, I believe is the moon, and these apparently must be stars. They're, every one of them is a dipole. You see the black and white? You see this? matrix in the back here, I believe that is the substrate of the semiconductor material that's under there. And it's, this is what picks up the, you know, the, that's the CMOS. Hold on, he's got a couple more here and then I'm going to probably leave it at that. Now that's another, another dipole. What it is, I have no clue. You guys are the ones that can play around. All he did was point it up at the sky and take these pictures. Now, I th think this might be the Pleiades. I don't know. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. Seven, I don't know. I'm just guessing at this point. I have no idea whatsoever what is going on here other than that these are polar fields surrounding particles, which apparently are stars. And this one I thought was the Pleiades, that's right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know. He's just, and that was at one point in time, and then a little later, Pleiades, this was at 1020 he took this, well, and then when there was a blood moon, I don't know, and at taken 940 the same night was this one. So here's the blood moon one. And that's at a certain time, whatever I said before. And here's the other one taken, I guess, earlier or later. No, earlier. How, how this all comes together, we've got a lot of looking to do. Now, this you can do with your own cell phone. My friend Renz over there in France, Bonjour Renz. These are Higgs fields. And why are they here? Because the light is concussing with the, the um, moisture particles and, and, and giving off the Higgs. All right, here they are in black and white. Obviously, well, not obvious, but the sun, I believe, is right back here. This is the main impact. And just like our showers, we're seeing them come away. There's our sun. <laughs> creating exactly the same showers. And don't forget, we had fission that created the separation of particles. This is the particles coming back together. Fusion, which is from the mini sun. That's what they say. That's not even my words. Those are the words of Mikio Kaku.